I was complaining in my head all the time. I realized, you know, what happened is, so, so I was raised Catholic. I'm, I'm a practicing Catholic. Did, Lent came along and, um, you know, probably mid forties, I was like, why am I going to give up? I'm going to try to give up complaining. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how hard it is to give up complaining because complaining wow. is not just it would, I was like, not just the complaining to other people, but the complaining, all of a sudden you start to notice when you start to give something up, you start to notice it. And I was, mm -hmm. and that is when I realized how bad my mindset was and how negative oh. I was. It was crazy. It was crazy. Wow. And becoming aware of it was key to changing it. Hey, you guys, welcome back to another amazing episode of Ask Me How I Know. Um, I've already had this extraordinary pre-recording conversation with Yvonne, and we've recorded over already for her podcast, which is Late Bloomer, and it's such an extraordinary podcast, and we're going to talk all about that because I want to empower you, and I want you to definitely go and check out her podcast because I know you listeners, you guys are awesome. And a lot of you um, will be inspired by the stories in her podcast. But before I go into talking all about how amazing Yvonne is and her podcast and her content on Instagram, and you, you see, I'm a little Twitter faded. So <laughs> Yvonne, welcome to ask me how I know. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So excited. Oh, it's just, it's, I've been looking forward to this conversation. It's been on my calendar and I'm just like, can it be Thursday already? I cannot wait to record this episode. I've been, I've been the same way. Kind of like, let's go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be really blunt with our audience for a moment. And I need to say, I'm going to throw, cause you and I are both very open about our age and life and things like that. So uh -huh. I'm going to throw it out. I think my, my listeners already know I'm 44 years old and that's midlife. It's early midlife. Um, and so I'm in this really like the beginning seasons of, of that whole midlife awakening as I, I refer to it. And I feel like you're my peer. You feel like I'm younger and I'm like, we're besties. And yet <laughs> you're serving this demographic over on your podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing over there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, midlife is like, I've discovered, I thought when I was first going to do the podcast, um, that it was going to be for people circling 50. That's kind of what I had in my mind. Cause that's where I am. You know, I'm 50, I'm going to be 53 at the end of July. Um, when I got the idea for the podcast, I was late forties. Uh, and I knew that the big five Oh was coming and so that was what I had in mind. But as I've talked to people more and more, I realized that, that, that midlife is huge. It, it, and people, it's like you self-identify as midlife. It, it all depends on if you feel you're there. And now that I'm looking back on it, I realized that probably my midlife awakening started about, I love that term that you just came up with, is probably started about when I was in my mid thirties. That's when I started yeah. to change. Um, it, it, that's when I had my first kid. So I had kids late. I'm a late bloomer all around, you know? <laughs> um, so that, but I was changing before that. And I was rethinking my values. I was rethinking what I wanted out of life. Um, I knew I wanted more control. I was an actress um, that was everything I'd ever wanted to do from the time I was like six or seven years old. I wanted to move to New York city. I wanted to be an actress. And in my mid twenties, I made that move and I worked for close to 10 years as an actress. And I did a lot of survival jobs in the meantime. And, uh, by the time I got to my mid thirties, I was like, well, what else might I do? I didn't, I didn't like the sense of not having control over my work life. It was okay. all auditioning. It was all about somebody else giving me permission to do the work that I love. And, you know, I wasn't a go-getter enough to create my own work. If I, if I had it to do over again, that is what I would do. I would have been, I would have been start, just produce your own stuff, write your own stuff, get it out there, take charge. But I didn't do that. 
you know, and did as we I got- know, did we know to do that though? You know what I mean? I feel mm. like content creation has evolved so much and it's become something that's more commonplace for the production, you know, what you'd have to do to produce, you know, 20 years ago is a very different scene. Yeah, I would say- I'm saying cut yourself changed. some slack. <laughs> yeah, and, and truly the um, the attitude towards producing your own work back then was kind of like, oh, well, that's just a vanity project. You're that's cute. Oh, isn't that sweet that you're doing that for yourself mm-hmm. and promote, you know, and, and now it's really viable. It really is a way to, to make it happen. You know, one, one person shows existed, you know, people were doing them. Um, but yeah, if you were producing your own work and, and giving yourself a starring role, it was kind of like a mm, little side eye, you know, uh-huh. from the other people in the industry. So yeah, it's interesting. And, but I, what I've really found is that in truth, I am a control freak deep, deep down inside. And I had to embrace that about myself and, uh, you know, became a photographer about the time I turned 40, I got laid off from a job in the 2008 recession and because of my wacky, spotty resume um, of all those survival jobs, I felt unemployable. I felt like I had no future, that there was nowhere for me to go, that I was going to ever make more money than I was at that point in time. And who was going to keep hiring me as I got older? Was that yeah. a, just a feeling, like just a limiting belief in your mind? Mm-hmm. Or do you think that yeah, there was sure. some credence to it? Oh, I think there's some credence to it. I think ageism exists, but, and I, and I certainly know that my, my, I didn't, I didn't have any deep industry skill in any particular industry that was like going to let me launch off on a, on a great upward trajectory career path. You know, Mm -hmm. I could do customer service. I had admin skills that only takes you so far. And I didn't really, frankly, enjoy either one. (laughs) The truth be told. (laughs) I'm good at customer service, less good at the administrative skills stuff. Like I've been in, in uh, you know, I've been an admin assistant to the, you know, a CEO of a hedge fund. I have done that at a fairly high level, but did I really enjoy it? Did I, was it my sweet spot? Was it my zone of genius? No, not at all. Um, And, uh, you know, that that layoff really i had already been thinking for about 5 years by then well if not acting what what's next what's uh-huh. going to what's exciting i don't i don't know and i spent 5 years in in a quandary feeling lost and that layoff really was like whew, that was the the wow what am i going to do and my husband was like sleep on it just you're going to be okay just sleep on it. It's going to be an amazing partner. Oh my gosh. So can I, if you don't mind, can I, I want to ask you about those five years. I feel like a lot of the listeners might be within that realm of trying to figure it out. What did those five years of kind of quandary wandering look like? It was messy. It was messy. I mean, there was a lot of great stuff happening. I was a young mom at that point. I had two beautiful kids. Um, I loved being a mom. I mean, I, I always say it's the hardest and best thing I've ever done. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a great marriage. My, my husband is supportive and great. We have friends. We we're wealthy in so many ways, but I felt, um, like I had lost my sense of self in all that and that I was a mom, I was a wife, I was a daughter and a friend and, but where was I in all that, you know? And um, yeah, so literally after him saying sleep on it, I woke up the next morning and, and I, I had an aha moment and I turned to him and I said, I want to do photography. I, I want to be a photographer. It came out of nowhere. I had been trying to take good pictures of the kids with my little point and shoot camera Mm -hmm. feeling miserably. I I had been dabbling, you know, and I'm always disappointed in my results and frustrated. And, uh, all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, I really want to learn how to do that and do it well. And he was like, okay. And so we used the charge card. I bought my first big camera. I enrolled in a study from home photography program. And that was it. I was like, it was an amazing, like suddenly the energy and the excitement around learning something new, 
the synapses were firing, you know, I was, every time I do a, a session, I would learn something and I would make mistakes, but I was excited and, you know, I could, it was just, ah, you know, this is awesome. It's but it was fun a side when you're, gig, you know, and when you're excited about something, when it's, I, I think when something is like what I'll call your inner purpose coming out and art is clearly part of who you are, you know, from the time of being a child, wanting to be an actress, which is an art and, you know, to grow and form and, you know, you're drawing that out. So those mistakes, when we're living into our inner purpose, they don't, they don't hurt so badly. <laughs> Right. Right. It's just, you know, it's like, oh, oh, how can I do better? You know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that was like, the thing is, is that photography, it there's a lot of photographers out there. And, it, and so when I was starting to do it, I was really undercharging and it was, so it was a side gig, you know, and, and it took me years to build that up to the point where I could do it full time and have it be viable. And so I, by the time I was 48, I finally took it full time and by then my forties were just tough. I had a lot of health issues, little things, not feeling good. And I, and I'm realizing now that it was all me telling myself, it was all mindset. It was all me telling myself, I'm, I'm getting older. Of course, I don't feel good. Sure. I have problems. Health problems come with getting old. It, it, there's just like this little, little conversation going back, going on in the back of my head. And I think a lot of people share that conversation, that idea about aging. Um, every time I'd start to work out, I'd injure myself, you know, it, it was just crazy. And I, and I was inconsistent about everything I tried. I had terrible habits, terrible habits, sleep, you know, staying up late editing and then hitting the snooze button over and over in the morning. And then I'm late and then I'm mad at the kids because they're late. And <laughs> It was not my forties. I was a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You. So you are so full of life and so just vivacious, like, like a juicy, delicious orange, you know, just so <laughs> sweet and delicious. And it's like, how I can't even imagine this woman you are describing. <laughs> I was complaining in my head all the time. I realized, you know, what happened is so, so I was raised Catholic. I'm, I'm a practicing Catholic. Lent came along and, um, you know, probably mid forties, I was like, what am I going to give up? I'm going to try to give up complaining. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how hard it is to give up complaining because complaining wow. is not just it was, I was like, not just the complaining to other people, but the complaining, all of a sudden you start to notice when you start to give something up, you start to notice it. And I was, mm -hmm. and that is when I realized how bad my mindset was and how negative oh. I was. It was crazy. It was crazy. Whoa. And becoming aware of it was key to changing it. You know? This is extraordinary because um I I am I am a Christian and you know it's like a lot of times people will look at maybe like overarching word organized religion of any kind as something that is more of a construct that can really be debilitating or it's putting you in a box and it's really interesting and exciting to hear like okay well you took lint seriously you gave something up and it opened this whole new adventure into it life did. it did it did it was crazy and I, I'll, and I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna say I am not a good Catholic. <laughs> okay. Put that in air quotes. I, I am not I, what you is. would call a good Catholic. I, uh, you know, I have, I have my own thing, you know, my own thoughts, my own issues around it all, but I, I go yes. and I use it as time mm -hmm. to check in and, and check in with myself and think about it and mm -hmm. check in with my community. And, um, yeah. And it did open up my life. It did. It was, it was amazing. And so then that was something I started, you know, I did that that one year and then I did it again the next year. And yeah, it, it it's just life-changing when you start to notice your thoughts and then your, how your thoughts are affecting your feelings and then your actions and all the stuff, right? Uh, just crazy. Just crazy. It, it, the ripple effect is endless. And when you start to take um, inventory of what is going on between your ears, mm. it's 
it's amazing. Scary in there. <laughs> it can be scary in there. It's really scary. I talk about the peanut gallery often mm. on my podcast and that I, I have this peanut gallery and they're all saying things. And there's always that one voice that's really loud, you know, above them all. And it's like, just be quiet. I don't right. need to hear from you. <laughs> You're not welcome. <laughs> I don't need to hear that. <laughs> and what I've learned since is I, it's just your brain trying to keep you safe. That's, you know, it's a great way of putting it. It really is. And so, sorry, there's a really loud truck going. By. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, okay. Um, so there, you know, it's just the, I, I lost the thread totally. Um, those, those peanut gallery people, it's your brain trying to yeah, work things to keep you safe. Yeah. And part of it is like not beating yourself up for, for, for having the thoughts, not beating mm-hmm. yourself up. It's like, allowing yourself to be, and like you said, just be quiet. Okay. I got you. I know you're there. You're trying to keep me safe. Okay. All right. But, but then again, you've got a chance to make a choice and make a change. And that Mm -hmm. is what I discovered as I was approaching 50 and, and Estelle, I I dug into a bunch of self-help books and I owe a lot to Mel Robbins book, the five second rule. I huge love Mel change, you know, I, I set up a morning routine. I started meditating. I started exercise. I committed like 30 days. I was like, I'm going to get up early before everybody else. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to exercise. I started affirmations. So woo woo, all the stuff, all the stuff. I was just like, throw that in the bag. Let's try that too. Um, and so that morning routine it was really hard to establish. First of all, it, not hitting the snooze button in the morning. That, that is something I'd borrowed from Mel Robbins as I took it and put it across the room, that alarm. Yes. So I'd have to get up and walk across the room and turn it off. And yes. by then it was like, okay, keep moving. Don't turn around and go back to that. Bed. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and then I would sit there and after a couple of weeks, I started to feel so good and I started to have energy and I, and, um, it felt like a gift I was giving myself every morning. And even then a month or two later, my, my kid randomly said to me, you seem happier, mom. Oh my gosh. When our kids speak those type of words into our life, boom, I'll never stop doing this. (laughs) Right. Exactly. That, that was it. I was like, okay, I'm onto something here. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, when I started feeling so good, then it changed everything. My whole outlook about aging started to change. I started to think about, wow, okay, if I'm approaching 50, I might, if I stay healthy, if I can keep the exercise going, I can stay healthy. I might have 30 years ahead of me to do work. I love. What is that? Am I going to be a photographer when I'm 70? Maybe not. What might I do? I don't know. So started thinking about it with a sense of excitement and openness and curiosity. And then the idea for the podcast came to me because I am a podcast junkie. And I thought, because I thought other people might be feeling like this, yes. you know? And I thought, well, I've listened to a ton of podcasts and heard people's stories and, and ideas. And it started to change my mind and my, out, my outlook. What if I were to interview people who've been stuck and worked through it and got out the other side and, and that was it, but it took me two years to get it going. Cause I was like, I don't have time. I've got my photography business to keep up with. I got kids. I don't know how to produce a podcast. I don't have the money to pay somebody to do it for me. I don't know what, I, who wants to hear from me anyway. I'm not an expert. <laughs> what, 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 there goes the voice again. Hello. Yes. <laughs> you know, and finally, like after a couple of years, it wouldn't, that voice would not go. The voice that kept telling me to do the podcast, that voice wouldn't go away. Mm-hmm. It was very patient. <laughs> and so I, Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say like anyone listening to this right now, even if it's not a podcast and even regardless of your age, like this is just a, a timeless just principle of that inner voice that just is persistent and doesn't go away and doesn't want to be silenced. That's something to listen to. And it's usually Mm. that quiet voice. I want to start a podcast or, you know, I, I want to start this nonprofit or I want, and it usually comes with that other combination of 
you're not good enough. You don't have this. You need to do this more. You don't have it. All the excuses also come clamoring mm. in to the, you know, decision making table. Seconds yes. later. Seconds <laughs> later. Yes. <laughs> the minute I love you have an impulse to do something, it's like, oh, wouldn't that be great? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, so, and that's the whole idea behind Mel Robbins book is that it, you've got a, you've got a short circuit that that's her five second rule is like, you've got the impulse towards that thing you want before you can let those other voices come in and be the naysayers and, and say, eh, put the brakes on, take a step towards it, like make a move mm-hmm. towards it, mm-hmm. do a little research or take an action or do something before those voices kick in and just see where that leads you, you know? This is great advice. I'm kind of an impulsive, like, oh, I have an idea. I got to do it. I, I, you know, there are different, sometimes there's like that balance between like, okay, I'm jumping in and my husband, I would say my husband like holds my ankles so that I don't, you know, constantly <laughs> jump too high and get lost in the clouds somewhere, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So are you, you have a tendency, you get the idea, you take action right away. Is that I'm it? An, I'm in action. I'm like, just, just go make it happen. I and, and that. also that ambitious, just make it happen. It, I, whatever we, we'll make mistakes. Even if I know everything, I'm still going to make a mistake. I might as well make a mistake head in this direction. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's amazing that that is what you do. And your husband's <laughs> there to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't walk He's my out anchor. The, of the road. He's like, don't walk out in the middle of the road, right? Okay. No, seriously. Since you said that, I am going to say I'm not <laughs> typically a tourist in national parks because I'm mm-hmm. an outdoor enthusiast and it's my element. And so usually I'm just out enjoying my nature. And recently we went to the east side of Glacier National Park and went to a place called, it's the uppermost entrance on the east side called Mini Glacier, M A N Y, as in Mini. Um, and so we're there and it's extraordinary. I'd never been there before. I I've literally, it. I'm curious I, now. it's a, there's a little cutest hotel. It's like just the neatest area ever. And there was a grizzly bear, which means I, it won a place in my heart. I'm like, okay, this is definitely my place. <laughs> so I'm like taking a picture for this couple because they're trying to get this beautiful backdrop. And I'm like, oh, you can't get the selfie. I can help you. I back up into the road, whatever, uh-huh. you know, it's, these are it's things twist. I do as a photographer. All the I, I back up like this with their little cell phone and I'm taking a picture and a car pulls up and I literally put the finger up and I'm like, just a minute. <laughs> and then I start backing up further and another car comes from another direction. Apparently almost hits me. I'm in clueless land. My husband oh, no. and the driver make a connection. And my husband says, I'm glad you're paying attention. And the driver's like, somebody's got to. <laughs> I was just like, oh. <laughs> they got a good picture let me tell you <laughs> but when we talk about somebody ha- you know having anchors in our life and it depends on that's a really funny I think tangible way of saying like yeah we need an anchor someone has got to be paying attention yes, but yes. we all have blind spots and it's not oh, just yeah. backing into traffic you know <laughs> <laughs> right. oh my gosh I do I do crazy things like that with my camera all the time like especially uh, there was what's one wedding I was I was shooting and I got I got so excited you know because it was the dance portion of the of the uh reception and I just wanted to get the most wide open shot I could get and get all the energy that was happening on the dance floor so I climbed up on this stool so I could shoot from above and I'm like And I'm literally like holding the camera over my head and like kind of taking blind (laughs) shots, you know, and, and, and the next thing I know, I'm like being held up by a guest at the, at the, at the reception because my, I had, I was falling off the stool, didn't even notice, didn't even notice. And there he is holding me up. (laughs) You know, it's like, uh. I think that you and I, with our stories, both actually, there's a, a pearl of wisdom in all of this. We're both so in the moment. Yeah. And that's a beautiful gift to be so engaged in a moment, so absorbed that you really could get taken out. 
and to have people around you, even strangers <laughs> looking out for you. <laughs> I really feel like I trusted. live a charmed life sometimes, truly, truly. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so many times things could have gone the other way, but <laughs> they right. didn't work out. But they didn't. I, they didn't. I always say all's well that ends well. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's well, as we think about people who are making these transitions in life, and I like, I call it the Madonna effect because Madonna has been, she, I don't agree with her and everything in the world, but oh my gosh, that woman has reinvented herself. My entire life, I've watched Madonna go from punk Madonna to cone boobed Madonna to right. her, all her other versions of Madonna, right? Yeah. Into almost like a philanthropist. And you've just watched her evolve. And Gwen Stefani is a little similar um, to that. But Madonna is like, you can, I can just look at her and you look at um, some images. If you Google it, you can see how she's changed over the decades. And yeah. it's very representative, but it takes awareness and it takes some forethought to, to be able to evolve and as I'm thinking about people looking to reinvent themselves I mean that's what you've been able to do and when yeah. I look at the the content you produce I just love it and I'm like this Thank is reinvention you. and it's you. beautiful so what would you say you know aside from I'm gonna say this aside from listening to late bloomer podcast and it doesn't mean it mean you need to be a late bloomer because it's wherever you're identifying um, I think everyone should listen to it just because the stories really set some track down, lay some track down for people to learn how to reinvent and to have some role models. But what are some, do you have any advice that you would offer to people who maybe they don't even know they're at that point of reinvention? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, some of it is like that feeling of being stuck where you kind of you don't even know it's 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 almost like mm -hmm. mm, the sand in the oyster it's it's like there's just something niggling at you that you don't you know things are are off it's it's funny when i named the podcast late bloomer living the the idea was okay that idea i i think i realized i'm like hmm, not everybody's gonna identify as a late bloomer sometimes people don't want that. It's like, I, I'm not, you know, there's stigma. a, yeah, there's the a stigma starts. around it, but I was huh. like, you know what? I'm going for it. I, mm -hmm. It's late bloomer living. It's, it's like living into the area of your life where you are a late bloomer. Cause I think we all genuinely have some late bloomer in us in some way, shape or form. You get to a certain point in life, you're going to be good at some things. There's going to be things that you're so good at that you take them for granted and you don't even realize that's your superpower, right? Um, but there's also going to be the areas where you know you're lacking. Maybe you are fighting your weight the whole time. Maybe you, you know, you've got the big career, but you're not spending enough time with your family. There's some, there's always going to be some area of our lives where we could improve, you know? And I think that what we need to do is stop, get off the, get off the hamster wheel and think about, think about what we want, like daydream a little, give yourself that mm. permission to, to daydream and think about what, just ask yourself, wouldn't it be great if dot, 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 and mm. then fill in the blanks and see where that lets you go in an ideal world. What would, what would my life look like? No holds barred, no limits. What would it look like if I had no limits and then, Oh, what could I do? And then the next thing is it's, it's there's some courage involved in it and there's, there's humility involved in it. Uh, my theory is, is that we all need to embrace the idea of allowing ourselves to be beginners in midlife and that mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity while we're here in this midlife messy middle thing. Um, there's opportunity because we still have hopefully our health and there's time and we got a little bit of time and everything that we do right now is going to make a huge difference and outsized difference on our life and health 20, 30 years from now. 
and if we can lay the groundwork now for what we want and where we're going to go, that is just huge. But you've got to give yourself the space to think about it. And then the courage to take the little steps to, to, and to be mm. okay with being uncomfortable and to be okay with, with, you know, I think we all want to be in our comfort zone. We all want to be like, oh yeah, I'm doing that thing. I'm good at. We want to look good. Well, and, and like you're saying, you know, when you're in your middle years, you have had successes, you have developed some skills and they do come, you know, and they're natural now. And your peers and your friends, they might have some successes and everyone's kind of in this really sweet spot of, uh, you know, reaping the reward of years of learning a skill and a craft and everything. And so to start back over, it can feel like, oh, well, I'm the person that did this, you know, as if there's a problem of some sorts and it's like, no, no no, this is beautiful. You're giving her a gift of an entirely new life almost. Yeah. I just talked to a guy today. Um, His podcast is going to come out quite a bit later, but he's, he was a first time writer in his seventies. He, he published a book in his seventies about re about retirement and how, how to retire. Well, how, what you can do. You were, I mean, I mean, just great. His, he has just, taken himself he was a successful business guy and he had retired for a while and then he was like hmm what could I do that would that would be give me some purpose right now Mm -hmm. and this is what he came up with he started interviewing other retirees and how they were doing anyway uh, like how interesting so interesting you know and and I'm like yeah I want to be like that in my 70s I want and I want everybody to be like that in their seventies. I want everybody to feel like they can keep growing, that they can keep learning new skills, um, stepping into new experiences. I I don't know about you, but when I do something new, I get this energy and this charge and this, there's that, what if it doesn't work, you know, and and it, and it is scary, but it's also exciting. Cause do you think that that's maybe even like, the fountain of youth, that curiosity as a of fact, and wonder. As a matter <laughs> and of just- fact, that is my talk. I just so so my latest thing is I'm 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 trying to learn I'm trying to learn how to do public speaking. So I just took a class, and um, had the culmination of that class uh, last week in front of an invited audience. And so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so now the next step is get it out there in front of people, see if I can find a TED talk somewhere that's appropriate. Um, middle-aged people groups. I don't know what I'm doing yet. It's If you'd asked me if I was going to public speak two, three years ago, I would have been a hard no. But the beginning <laughs> of my talk, I'm going to give it to you right now is what if I told you that I believe I've discovered the key to the fountain of youth? That's my opening line, because I do think that being a beginner is allowing yourself, really, it's, it's allowing yourself to be a beginner that puts you in that position of, ooh, I, I'm going to do this new thing. And there's mm-hmm. excitement and there's energy within that. And that, to me, is the idea of feeling young. Yes. You know? And you, whenever you do something new, you're creating new little neural pathways in your mind. Our minds are, our brain is plastic. That's what they're finding out. The plasticity is way beyond what they realize. When I was growing up, when I was probably, they, they were like, oh, after 18, you're, that's it for the brain, right? You, you probably and it's that. like, yeah, yeah. And, but when they, at my age, they were saying it was more like 24, you mm. know, like, oh, mm-hmm. when, you know. So they gave a few more years. <laughs> maybe, maybe, right? And but but the thing is, is they're finding out, yeah, okay, there, there's some differences between an older brain and a younger brain. But when you put yourself in a position of having to learn something like me having to learn how to do photography, it's actually I read it somewhere that it was like it's one of those skills that having to learn that the, the ins and outs of operating that camera and all the digital stuff that goes with it and all the tech that I've had to learn over the years, yeah, it's providing my brain with new neural networks, you know? 
So mm-hmm. things are connecting and, you know, they talk a lot about crossword puzzles. It really isn't about doing crossword puzzles. It's right. about finding your spark, whatever it is, whatever that interest is, and then following that spark and do, and, and figuring it out and learning, never stop learning. Right. Okay. And and in the vein of late bloomer living, and I just always picture this beautiful flower and roots. Every time I hear your podcast, I don't know why, this is the image that comes to mind. But, you know, you think about bulb flowers and how they reproduce down at the bottom and then they sprout up. And if you consider the brain and if you're just, say, doing the same crossword puzzles, you're sure, but you're accessing the same access point every right. single time. But the moment you add something completely new, it's like a whole new bulb down there. It's like, oh, well now we have to connect this bulb to everything else. Mm-hmm. And it's going in there Ooh, and doing great. All, all the wiring. Like and then, so it's creating all this new versus just accessing the same access points all the time. I think a house analogy with wiring in a house would be better than a, than a plant, but (laughs) I like the bulb thing. And, and two, like a couple of other women that I, that I host rooms in clubhouse with, uh, they have used the, the image of the perennials, like any perennial plant, any perennial flowering plant has a season too. So that there's going to be times when you just need to, to like, I took that five years to wonder what was next. That's Mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes you do need time to just go inward and yeah. sort through your stuff. Um, and then, you know, you got that there, there comes a time though, when you got to allow yourself to, to, to flower. Um, that is so true. And I think that I'll add to the flowering process that um, I always think because, and you're, you're up North also other side of the country, but Mm -hmm. I mean, you get four distinct seasons as well. Correct. Yeah, Love it. Yes. And those coming from California, I wasn't used to real strong, distinct seasons, but I really learned it's taught me a like tremendous amount about life, but that winter time when the days are so short and it's just really not great to, it's not, but I don't like being outside that much in winter. And so, and I, but I love outdoors. I'm like outdoor creature, but I'm trapped inside. And the first year that was a big challenge and learning to overcome that and to accept, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, this is the season of rest. This is a season of stillness and quiet and wonder and reju- and this is when you rejuvenate. And so mm-hmm. applying that across the board into life to say, okay, it's okay for me to have this period where I'm just still and quiet and I'm not letting uh, myself, you know, like chase all my ambitions and everything, just mm-hmm. rest. Yeah. And, and to taking in taking in information and, and inspiration, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, like feeding yourself well. Yeah. I have found like, as, as, um, as we've come out of COVID and my photography business has picked up massively again, I'm so busy. And so now I'm like, Oh, photography podcast, photography podcast, like <laughs> trying to get them both done. It's like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, which is a great problem to have. Um, but I've, stop listening to podcasts as much as I was. And I, I realized I'm like, boy, I really need, and I, and I haven't been going for me walks right. at the beach. Cause we're, we're lucky enough that we're like a 10 minute drive from long Island sound. I call it beach therapy. It's getting yes. out and connecting to nature. And it's like, whatever you need to do to recharge your batteries, that is so key, you know? And, and the yes. listening to podcasts for me is um, getting that input from somebody else's brain and, and creativity and, and soaking that in and, and then letting it marinate in my brain and seeing what comes out the other side. You know, you got to have input and output. Yes. I yeah. I, I like that it is input and output and the way you phrase that because you can't just be a taker. And if you, like, if we think about electricity or something, I mean, you can't just keep everything and charge yourself and leave it there. It does need to like continue the circuit pattern, let it flow on to somebody else in whatever way it's going to come out of you. It'll come out the right way for the other person. Yeah. Yeah. I think the key to, to like, to 
the key to happiness from, from, from my point of view is, is finding some purpose outside yourself to, to, to go, to go with and to, to offer out to the world in whatever way your gifts allow for, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah, it can't, it can't all be in. It can't, and there were, there was a time when I, I was just taking in and taking in and taking in. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But it's coming out, but it's coming out. I'm going to say is. that is that our taken process might, the timeline, there isn't a distinct timeline to it, but we need to be open to when it's ready to be released and yeah. poured out of us. But yeah. depending on someone's life circumstances and what they're working through or what they're overcoming, like mm -hmm. maybe they, they're taking in a bit more and, and really rebuilding internally so that they can release it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause there's, you know, th there's going to be times in your life that you can you got nothing to give. It's, it's true. Oh gosh. And receiving that can be really hard. Ooh, right. Ooh. Ooh, that's a thing. That's a, that's I can a real give thing. all day long. You want me to receive help or something from you? Ooh, I was giving yeah. you a compliment earlier when we first just hopped on. You're like, oh, I'm uncomfortable now. And, <laughs> and it, it can like receiving can really make us uncomfortable. Yeah. Last, you know, have you ever, do you ever do that thing where you pick a word for the year? I, the word, the word always comes to me about, you know, two, three months in, I'm like, oh, like this year it's acceptance. Ah. Like, oh yeah. I'm just learning about acceptance all year long. There you I receive go. it. There you <laughs> yeah. Go. So tell me more about that. About My that. word last year was help and mm. the idea. So, and that was the word that came to me as the idea of, I, I realized that in order to get the podcast going, um, in order to build a website, to learn how to build a website, to do all the things that needed to happen, I was going to need some help. And, mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay. And I'm very uncomfortable asking for help. And then I was like, okay, so if I'm going to ask for help, I also need to make sure that I'm, that I'm giving help in order so I, so I can feel okay about asking for help. Right. So it was like, and maybe not quid pro quo with that one person, but mm -hmm. so if that, if I'm accepting help from another person, trusting that, okay, I may not be able to help them right now, but I can help somebody else maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and part of that was just calling people to check in on them. It could be that simple, you know, right. it doesn't have to be, I don't know. It doesn't have to be anything. Let me teach you trigonometry, <laughs> you know, right. It doesn't have to be right. something complicated. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but it made a huge difference for my year last year to, to kind of make myself get uncomfortable about, you know, get past my discomfort with asking for help. And, uh, it was a huge growing experience for me this year. It's all about play trying to incorporate Ooh. play into my life more because I tend to grind, um, and, and, and dig in and bur burrow into the work right. stuff too much. Um, so this year I'm, I'm focusing on play and trying to incorporate play into everything, play into the work and play into, you know, leaving time for that. I think that is very much neglected as much as people will kind of share some, some fun moments. I think that just internal ability to just be playful and have it come out in just this natural way. For me, I have to really say, oh, tap out your, you know, I'm not on a clock. I work for myself, but you know, like, oh, you're off the clock, go play and have fun. And versus wait a second, I can be incorporate play into the elements that build my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. It, doing the podcast actually feels like play to me. You know what I mean? It does. Like, <laughs> it? We get to sit here and do this thing where we just talk to each other and it's like, is this work? Really? Yeah. Good. Right. Exactly. And I, <laughs> I think that's the best kind of work right there is when it feels like play and fun, like, oh, I'm accomplishing something really wonderful that will serve people well, but I get to enjoy it also. Right. This is amazing. 
like doing photography for me is play when I'm doing it. There's all the other things that go with having a photography business that don't necessarily feel right. like play. But when I am behind that camera and I'm connecting with that person on the other side and trying to tell their story and trying to find that moment or that perfect smile or, you know, what, what can I say to loosen them up? And the, oh, let's, oh, look at the light over there. Come on, let's go get, you know, and, and it, like this excitement bubbles up and it's great. So how though do I incorporate the play into, oh gosh, I got to pay sales tax. I got to, I got to like set up. I got to oh, update I gotta, the website. I right, got to send, send an invoice, invoice out to somebody. <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, they like, didn't pay. I got to follow up with them. Right, oh. right. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So how do you, how do you do that? How do you find that, you know, a little bit of, I don't know. I'm still struggling. I'm learning. I'm trying. You're going to crack it. You found the fountain of youth. You're going to figure out this part. This is this year at the end of the year, you're going to have it all figured out. I love it. Thank you for your confidence in me. Oh, a hundred percent confident. A hundred percent. I just going to put you on speed dial. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm yes, like, absolutely. Like, I need a little, I need a little burst. Absolutely. I'll be like, here's your burst. I will give it to you. You can oh call my me goodness. too. Oh, Two ways. Cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe how fast our time is has flown by, Yvonne. And I we knew this before we started recording. I said this is going to go by so fast. This is the easiest podcast to prepare for because I already know you like you love you. So I'm like, <laughs> um, but I can't believe it. it's it's time to wrap it wrap up. And I want to give you an opportunity if there's any other tips, tricks, advice, you know, that you want to circle back to and fill in the gaps, a little mm. extra icing, if you will, on the cake. <laughs> I would say, to, so just challenge yourself. If I'm giving advice, just challenge yourself to take a little step every day that's a little outside your comfort zone. Just a little baby step, just a little something that you want to do. Not you feel you have to do, not you feel you should do. None of that. Get rid of the shoulds and the, you know, have tos. But if there's that little, that little voice, listen to it and take a little step that you're afraid to take. Teeny tiny step. That's it. Um, I love it. That's and and the more people do that, it just builds that muscle and courage and confidence. Oh my gosh, it just, is. It re no confidence is a muscle. It totally mm -hmm. is. Like I'm confident yeah. in my Maybe. photography skills now. I still make mistakes, but that confidence came from the doing. It came yeah. from making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be willing yeah. to make mistakes. Oh, it's so powerful. Yeah. And how I want to know, I want you to choose where do you want listeners to connect with you? Um, come check out Late Bloomer Living. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, LateBloomerLiving.com is the, this kind of like the hub for all things. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'll, you know, you can find podcast listings there. You can listen to the podcast on any podcast app that's out there just search out late bloomer living subscribe if you like it leave me a nice little thing a nice little note or a rating or something that'll help people other people find it but yeah that's pretty much it oh, this I has been i love this you are so much fun <laughs> your episode is going to become a well who knows how the crisscross of time goes right. but i can't wait for people to hear your podcast your episode on my podcast it's going to be oh, fabulous. I'm, I'm so excited. And I'm just, and, and I'm going to let the listeners know, this is also the power of networking. And so if you are, and maybe that's stepping out of your comfort zone. So I'm going to mm. give a challenge to everyone listening that, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone might be mean making a phone call to a stranger or responding to an email, or maybe you're giving an introduction to someone in some capacity there's so much power and there's so many extraordinary people around this globe that, that you can connect with. So, um, who, it, who introduced us? We should Mike give a Murawski. shout out. It's funny. Yes. And, and it all came because I got, I got, did something that was very uncomfortable for me. And I started doing clubhouse 
completely uncomfortable for me. I started talking in rooms, making myself speak up, you know, and then eventually like I've met so many people this year by stepping outside my comfort zone. It's, Mm -hmm. it's incredible and amazing things are happening through people and making friends and ah, my mind's exploding. (laughs) Yes. It is all that one step of stepping out in, out of your comfort zone. So challenge for everyone, like take that little baby step, or maybe it's a big daddy long leg step. If you're ready for it, you know, whatever the step is, just step outside your comfort zone and, um, audience, I appreciate you so much. If you, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you rate it five stars, drop a review, let Yvonne and I know what served you well, or what questions you have. And, um, and if you just want to fill it with some words of encouragement and affirmation, great. But as Yvonne said, those reviews definitely help other people find the podcast and encourage other people. So Thank you for taking time to do that. And until next time, I'm going to say two things this time. One, take that step of courage, but as always, go and find your freedom. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Ask Me How I Know. This episode was brought to you by Three Keys Investments. They are dedicated to helping people like you. Yeah, you, my awesome listeners, develop passive income and legacy wealth through multifamily investing. Feel free to check out their website, threekeysinvestments.com, to see if there is an offering that will help your portfolio grow and meet all of your needs. If you haven't already rated, reviewed, subscribed, liked all of those bells and whistles, I would be absolutely honored if you would do that for Ask Me How I Know. Thanks again, and go make it a great day.